So let's now talk about public equities markets, some of the various markets and uh, some of their activities. New issues of stocks, even and bonds, are sold directly to the public and to institutions in what are known as primary the primary market. This is the market where firms raise their financial capital. They sell their stock and their bonds to the public. The primary market differs from the secondary markets, which are stock exchanges and over-the-counter markets where investors can trade securities with one another, with other investors. The primary market transactions usually raise cash for the issuing corporations, while the secondary markets, market transactions do not. Therefore, individuals to decide on their portfolio and their investment and the relative pricing of the various uh, various securities. Investment banking is the sale of stocks or bonds for corporations that help such companies raise funds by matching people and institutions who have money uh, that they want to invest with the corporations that need the resources to exploit their their new opportunities. There's, this is one of the reasons they're called market makers. They essentially make a market for the securities or for the financial um, instruments that individual companies want to sell, either debt instruments like bonds or stocks, which are equity. High frequency trading has become popular over the last several years and has really dramatically changed the landscape for various kinds of investing. Um, this is where uh, proprietary algorithms in computers and all uh, in various uh, uh, software packages um, trade automatically based upon the ups and downs of various securities in a matter of seconds to take advantage of price differences. The same stock might be traded on multiple exchanges or related stocks in an industry might be traded. And by looking at differences between the values of those stocks, you could buy one, sell the other and make money uh, in those short-term transactions. Uh, many severe crashes in the market have been caused by, um, not many, but several uh, crashes have, been, have happened because these trades start to happen very quickly, faster than human beings are involved. And, um, and that therefore they, they end up going into this, into a, a feedback loop which can cause a, a severe crash in the market. Uh, they usually correct it very quickly, but still they do show, uh, they do sometimes cause volatility in the marketplace. This is the introduction of computers and computers making decisions about investment decisions uh, have caused a, additional volatility in the marketplace at times. Securities markets provide the mechanism for buying and selling securities. In the broadest sense, stock and bond markets may be thought of as providers of liquidity, so that if you own stocks, you can get cash for them if you need to. It's the ability to turn these kinds of ownership, ownership in a bond or a stock, into cash if one needs to, or to trade one for the other. Without liquid securities markets, many potential investors would have to sit on the sidelines because they couldn't tie up their money for the long term. Um, and therefore, they, are, they would, would not want to take that long-term risk. Securities markets allow you to buy something with long for a, the long term, but if necessary, know that you'll be able to sell it, perhaps at a higher price, but also perhaps at a lower price, but at least have some access to liquidity um, going forward. There are several stock markets. These are they exist around the world. The two biggest U.S. stock markets are the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ. Uh, both of these are, are now publicly traded organizations as well. They're no longer not-for-profits. Uh, electronic trading, this computer trading we talked about before, is faster and less expensive than floor trading. And new accounts for most of this, and, and, and now these uh, uh, online type trading, electronic trading accounts for most of the stock trading done worldwide it used to be that individuals would actually trade stocks on the floor of this of the stock exchanges nasdaq was traditionally a, an electronic market and the new york stock exchange was traditionally a floor traded market but increasingly there's a um, a move towards electronic markets over the counter markets is another type of marketplace which is a network of dealers that um, 
they're all over the country and they're linked by telephones, computers, teletype machines and all this sort of thing where markets where securities can be traded. Uh, most corporate bonds in U.S. securities are traded over the counter. Uh, because of this, the OTC, the, uh, the, um, uh, the over-the-counter market or OTC market accounts for the largest total, do total dollar valley value of all of the secondary markets. Um, these are traded in different areas and not necessarily on the floor of the exchanges. Um, that can also occur and largely the electronic platforms that are out there facilitate uh, this kind of activity. Investors, especially professional ma money managers, want to know how well their investments are performing. So financial managers um, need to know how their securities are performing compared to imp competitors and compared to their other their industry and other industries. Um, so different kinds of performance measures called indexes are created. An index compares current stock prices with those in a, uh, in a specific base period. Um, the average is the average of a certain of certain stock prices, and sometimes they're weighted by market capitalization. That is, how many shares are outstanding, how much value is outstanding for the company, to develop these indexes to see how the overall market is doing when you add it all up, uh, or how the various segments or industries, uh, or various uh, types of industries are doing small caps, small capitalization companies, large capitalization companies, all these various kinds of, um, of averages. Uh, you kind of want to diversify your portfolio and only buy big companies. There's those kinds of indexes. Um, broad market is the S&P, Standard & Poor's 500, the 500 largest companies in the United States, various kinds of indexes. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is one. These are the 30 companies that are listed here. Um, many follow that industry average to see how the market has gone up and down over the years. Um, but these companies are only a small fraction of those listed on the New York Stock Exchange. But they're, they're very large, so they account, to a, they account for about 25% of the total value of the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, many professional investors, however, sort of discount the way that the stock, the the S, I mean, excuse me, the Dow Jones Industrial Average uh, indexes the market, and there are better indexes that most financial managers tend to follow. In particular, uh, the S and P 500 index, but others as well, uh, smaller indexes like S and P 100. Those sorts of things are done with a different kind of weighting. But anyway, you hear about the Dow Jones Industrial Average all the time, and these are the the, um, the, the companies that are in it. And every now and then companies enter and leave that index. The Dow Jones Industrial Average gained 10 times from August 1982 to the beginning of 2000. This was the internet bubble and they're difficult. Bubbles are difficult to see. That is highs in the market are difficult to see until they burst. Before the housing bubble burst in October of 2007, Dow Jones hit an all time high um, however, for investors to make sound decisions, it's important that they stay in touch with the news and the market indexes and the like um, to understand what's going on and be aware if there might be uh, some differences in the value. The, the, the market, the, the securities markets in general uh, measure how the mar how the uh, how business investment and profits are doing. Um, within the overall economy. So it gives a sense as to the overall position of our economic system and the overall sense of where the economy is. It's not perfect, but it does give you that sensibility. In the next uh, lecture, we're going to talk about all of this financing and what, in the context of a, of a specific problem, which is how you manage capital assets, financing and the like, your assets, liabilities, cash and the like doing a, a rapid growth scenario, and that'll be the, uh, the next lecture in this series.